Hi everybody, it's Matt Scudero with the Credit Research Foundation. I hope you're well. I'm super excited to be with our platinum partner, Experian. In this session, Experian, a platinum partner of CRF, will share the differences and key benefits of traditional logistic regression and modern machine learned scores. And with that, I'm pleased to present to you, Allison Tixera. Great, thank you so much, Matt, for the wonderful introduction. And now I wanted to take a second to introduce the Experian team. We have John Crickus with us today. He's a senior product manager, and he is a subject matter expert in scores. We have Bonnie Garrity. She is a senior sales consultant with Experian, and she specializes in the trade credit vertical. And then I'm Allison Teixeira. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at Experian, and I also specialize in the trade credit vertical. And today to kick things off, I really wanted to share some statistics with you that are really important as we go through this presentation. Did you know that 50% of risk is in the bottom 10% of scores? And today we can identify 74% of bad accounts in the bottom 20% of scores. And we have deployment strategies that help improve collection efforts efficiencies by 20%. These numbers are really big and they're so exciting and I can't wait to turn it over to John so that he can share how you can reap the benefits of these scores. Thank you very much, Allie. So let's get started by talking about what type of scores you can take advantage of and what they will do for you. So we'll start with our machine learn models. Now we're gonna talk about two general type of models, machine learn and logistic regression. Machine learned are models that use very advanced techniques and they actually outperform now traditional logistic regression models. But let's talk in general about what models can do for you. So scoring models in this example can significantly reduce risk. Generally, they're gonna project out about 12 months, though recently many models are going out 24 months. As we can see here in this example, if you had $10 million of either delinquency or losses, by deploying the machine learned models, we can gain an additional 12% performance. So where you have a $100 million portfolio with $10 million of underperforming accounts, we could reduce that by $1.2 million. Really a significant gain. Now let's go and talk about the different types of models. Many of you will be familiar with logistic regression models. If you recall, if you're not a current modeling uh, expert or someone who works in the modeling field, you may recall uh, in college working on logistic regression models, either in statistics class or I was exposed to them working in econometrics. Logistic regression models are a standard technique, uses multivariate techniques. So you may be familiar with that term also, multivariate models. They're very common, again, in the, in the credit world, uh, looking at outcomes such as past due or business failure, really any type of bad event. And that's where a model starts with, is what the bad event is going to be. Machine learn models or machine learning, and we'll explain why we refer to it as machine learn, are very recent innovation. They use advanced techniques. However, when deploying a machine learning model, it's best to do it in a static deployment. The reason for that is now the model is stable. It's, it's not continuing to evolve and explainable. So that, for example, the adverse action codes are now static. That is done in order to provide explanation to both model governance and also to regulatory authorities. And in deploying a machine learned model, these use advanced techniques. So what's behind the score? Any model is gonna use a wide variety of data. And in fact, the more data that you have to use, the better. So when we took a, uh, take a look at a standard uh, risk model, again, be that for predicting delinquency, be that for predicting default, be that for looking at insurance risk. Uh, it could also be for identifying the best prospects. It could be for positive reasons. Who's going to respond to an offer? It could also be what type of pricing or what type of offer should I make? So in looking at a wide range of data, 
And I'm going to focus here now on the risk segment. So we're trying to avoid delinquency. We're trying to avoid business failure. Um, you have an enormous amount of data available. That data has to be matched. It has to be linked in a corporate setting because most scores will score the corporate entity. They're not scoring the store on the, the corner street st store. Uh, they're scoring the entity, the business entity that owns that business. What we see in risk models is that payment information by far is going to drive the models. So it's historical payment behavior. Has there been delinquency that was present in the past? It's looking at the current payment status, uh, both trade balance and number of accounts and percentage of accounts. How severe is the delinquency? Is it just in the one to 30 category or is it getting into 90 and over? Also, credit utilization is very important. So similar in the consumer world, where if you're a consumer and you have a consumer credit card for a $10,000 line of credit and you're using $9,000, that's going to be a significant negative. Same applies to businesses. If a business over the past 12 months has had a high credit of $20,000 and now they're using $18,000 of that, that's high credit utilization and that's going to lower the score. For many businesses that have been in business uh, a number of years, the age of the business is a positive. Younger businesses, that's a negative. So we do look at age of business, what industry they're in, how many employees they have. So that has a lower impact on risk models, generally speaking, than the trade information. Then somewhat in between is we have derogatory items. Uh, this is less applicable. So we're talking here about collections and liens and judgments. This is less applicable to larger businesses. Larger businesses, public records are very common, so it's not going to impact the score as much. But for most businesses, small, mid-sized business, the presence of being placed for collection or having a tax lien against a business is serious and will also impact the model. So all these factors are blended together into a predictive score in order to come out with the best prediction going forward to change the odds in your favor. So now let's talk about how we would deploy these scores. What our clients are looking to use our predictive scores for, or using predictive scores for, number one, would be obvious, they want to predict risk. Where are they going to encounter the most risk? And third-party uh, modeling or third-party bureaus providing that information, uh, like Experian, and we're able to deploy a machine learned model which uses very advanced techniques and advanced uh, uh, programming in order to deploy the model. We've pushed out to 24 month projection. So in predicting delinquency and especially in predicting business failure, we can go out to 24 months. So predicting risk is the essence, the starting point of why risk models exist. But they also serve very important roles for many companies in accelerating decisions because you can now segment your risk. High scoring accounts probably receive either little to no attention and can be automatically approved or put on a fast track approval. At the other end of the scale, low scoring accounts with the highest risk may again be either auto rejected or have very limited lines of credit. And what many businesses will do is focus their efforts on accounts that score in the middle. Uh, those are accounts that might require a little bit more review to decide should they receive approval and what type of approval or not to be approved. And in accelerating decisions and segmenting accounts, we also gain huge efficiency. As Ali mentioned up front in the collection area, businesses have found they can improve their collections effort by 20%. And that's by segmenting. We have some collection scores that show bottom 20% of accounts yield almost no dollars when an account becomes severely delinquent. So you can become highly efficient, especially in say a portfolio review, by using analytics and score segmentation. Now, I'm going to turn it over now to Bonnie. And Bonnie, you know, you work with clients all the time, and we talk about the three benefits of managing risk, of accelerating decisions, and also boosting efficiency. And I think that's something we see a lot, especially as our clients face the issue of a large portfolio that they have really no chance to review all the accounts every month, but scores help them focus on the problem accounts. 
Absolutely. Thank you, John. It, it is true. What our clients are going to gain is greater, more consistency and more predictable uh, decisions for their accounts with less manual work. And that's so important. You're right. You know, automation is really what a lot of the folks are looking for at this point. So if anyone has an automation initiative, create scores is really the best way to go about getting started there. So some of the benefits of scoring, what's the first thing that you really want to do? You want to figure out what you're trying to predict, right? As John said, you're trying to predict whether your customer is going to pay you on time. Are you trying to predict whether your customer is going to be in business or maybe there's something else? So that's the first thing you want to determine. Second, as we've noted, machine learned models have a much higher performance than traditional logistic regression models. That's a really important statistic. Um, it's more you know, current. These are more cutting edge models. So you want to make sure that that's something that your company company is using. And third, innovative scoring models are available to you. So you want to make sure you understand what's out there, find a credit service provider that you can partner with, and reap the benefits from the work that they've already done, rather than creating something in-house. So in summary, as we said, machine learned models are going to give you a nice lift. So you want to make sure that that's something that you're looking at. And, and score validations are very important. So this is a good way to determine is going to work best for your portfolio set. Um, what you want to be able to do is partner with a credit service provider that can retro score your portfolio. So you want to go back in time. If they go back a year, score your ent entire portfolio based on the information that was available at that time and then look at the current data for today's scoring. What does, did those scores predict what, what actually happened in your portfolio? This way you gain the benefit of the scoring and are able to make more predictive um, decisions and better quality decisions on your customer set. And finally, what are the next steps? So the first thing you wanna do is look at your scoring model. What are you using today? Is it a machine learned model? So determine, you know, is am I using the appropriate model for my customers to predict what I'm looking to predict? Um, and what type of model is it? Is it a machine learned model? So these are some of the steps that you can take. And then finally, let the experts do the work. Partner with a credit service provider that can assist you, number one, in your analysis, and then third, second, in determining what scoring models you should be using to reap the benefits of scores. And please check out our next micro learning session on score performance and gains in efficacy. Wonderful, thank you so much, Bonnie and John, for this insightful presentation on scores. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Matt. Thank you for joining our first session on scores. In case you missed it, you can watch this video here at crfonline.org. Come join us for our second session, How to Best Score Your Portfolio on May 4th, 2021.